Hi everyone, I've got some great news today and that is that we've just hit 20,000 subscribers on the channel and I think that's fantastic and I'm really happy it's happened in a really short time and I just wanted to say thank you for everybody's support and everybody's feedback and for being so kind as well. Uh, I think I've had some fantastic comments on all of the videos and uh, it's just making me want to do more as well which is great. So I'm hoping to do one video a week, uh, sometimes more uh, if I feel like I've got time but at least one a week. And uh, I think you guys have said that you really like the format of the videos as well. It's something different to a lot of the other videos that are out there. So it's more of that you're in the room with me and I'm talking you through the painting as well. So a lot of people have said that they like that, that, that approach. So I'm going to keep going with that as well. And uh, uh, hopefully you guys will like, like the videos and keep learning a little bit more as well. Let me know what you want to see as well in the future a little bit more. I'm going to keep posting those little polls up every week as well. So you guys can feel like you're having some choice and some input into the tutorials that you see as well. Sometimes they'll be around like the new releases that are coming out, like the Space Marines that we've been doing and other things, but I'll try and do a little bit of everything. I know I've not done much Age of Sigma yet, but I'm hoping to do a bit of everything. There's just so much to get through. Uh, and I'm trying to make each one unique and different as well. So, so it's not just doing the same thing everybody else is doing. It's, it's new stuff as well. So, in, and hopefully we can just have some fun with it too. So instead of doing a prize draw, which is what I did when we hit 10,000 subscribers, I thought it would be nice to do uh, 20 top tips to miniature painting success. So I sat down last night and I had to think about what kind of things I could say. So I wrote down 20 and uh, I'm going to go through those and share those with you. Some of them you probably are like, yeah, okay, we know that. And then some of them, it might be new to you and it might be different. So I'm going to go through those now and uh, hopefully you can take something from it either way. Should be fun and uh, a little bit of an insight into uh, what I think about painting as well. So it's not just about sitting down with tutorials. This is more about uh, what I think and, and how I approach painting and what I've learned over the years as well. So we'll get started in just a second. Okay, so here we go. So uh, tip number one is get good equipment. So you need good brushes, good tools, good palettes, good lamp, all of those things. When I say good, I mean, don't, you know, don't just go for the cheapest option, do some research, ask different people what their opinions are and go for the best stuff. So if you want to produce the best results, you really need to have decent equipment. So, so really good brushes. I use Winsor & Newton Series 7 brushes a lot for my high-end painting. I use Citadel brushes for a lot of my army stuff, but for my display painting, I use those ones. Uh, this is a Daylight Company lamp. These are great lamps. Uh, you can find those on Amazon. Uh, you can get all your different equipment uh, from, from loads of different places, but just, just do your research and just make sure you've got good equipment. So that's tip number one. Uh, so number two, water down your paints on the palette. <laughs> so, so don't take your paint straight out of the pot. Always put them onto the palette. You're going to have to add some amount of water depending on what it is. So uh, yeah, just put them onto the palette, whether it be a wet palette or a dry palette, you know, or a ceramic palette thin your paints, water down your paints. That's, a, that's an obvious one, but you know, it's worth repeating. Uh, so keep a recipe book. When I say that, I don't mean cooking. I mean uh, a recipe book. So this is my one. So this is where I keep all of my, uh, my recipes for my armies and whatever I'm painting. So I've got all that in there uh, because my memory gets worse as time goes on and I can go, oh, how did I paint my Eldar? And it'll just tell me I'm here. So have one of these on your desk, just get a book. Uh, so that's tip number three. So tip number four is have two sets of brushes. So one fancy set of brushes. And when I say set, I normally just have two. So, so it's four in total. So uh, fancy set for display stuff and when you're doing detail work and then a slightly rougher set or basically your older set, uh, which are the same size brushes, but you use them for batch painting. And what you'll find is that the two fancy brushes become your batch painting brushes when you replace them. So it's nice to have that so you're not constantly wearing out your decent brushes when you're doing batch painting or squad painting and you've got decent brushes for, for your fancy stuff, for your high-end painting, your display painting. So that's what I tend to do. Uh, and I use a size one and a size two for that. So it's two size ones, two size twos, one set good, one set not so great. Uh, okay, so uh, number five is choose a mentor. So when I say choose a mentor, I mean, um, so someone that you aspire to be like, or someone that you you see that in, that you that influences you in the world of painting. So you don't have to contact that person and say, you know, will you be my mentor? Uh, you have to choose them 
and then uh, basically be influenced by their work and how they how they work as well. Uh, you, you, you know, if it's someone you can talk to, that's great. But sometimes it doesn't have to be. I mean, when I was when I started painting, my mentor I would say was probably Mike McVeigh, but I never spoke to him until I was in my late twenties. But he was definitely my mentor because painting was different back then. But I would say that he taught me a lot of painting. So uh, choose a mentor. Uh, the mentor will then you know, help you through, you know, your painting process and 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 how you can learn to paint as well. And you can just observe their work as well. If you look at a lot of the early artists in the Renaissance, they're, you know, they're mentors, they influence their work heavily. Uh, so it's the same sort of thing. You'll find that your styles follow those ways. So your mentor is normally someone whose style you want to emulate or you know, copy or uh, improve upon, which is the main aim really, is to become better than your mentor. So uh, choose a mentor. Uh, so the next one is create your own style. So going on the back of choosing your mentor is not just to copy people, because that's easy, is to choose your style uh, and then, what, you know, your style isn't chosen. It, it, you know, it comes as you paint more. So you'll find that it will go down a path. So when I started painting, it was always the heavy metal style, the clean style that you saw in White Dwarf. And nowadays, uh, the internet is, you know, you can see everyone's style, whereas when the internet started, you saw Spanish style, French style, German style painting, and then the Americans had their own style, and everybody did. But now it's all sort of blended together to become a world style. So it's really important now that you find your own style, uh, and that's normally informed by the people that you like or the style that you like, but, but don't be um, don't be pressured or feel like you've got to go in one direction or another, you can try your own thing. And it's and it's important that you, you get your own style so that when people look at your miniatures, they're instantly recognizable as your miniatures. So yeah, so don't try and copy people too much, but just experiment and see where it takes you and then, and then have some fun with it as well. So it'll be really good to do that. Okay, <laughs> let me just get some water. Still a bit poorly guys, sorry. Uh, okay, so Number seven, listen to feedback. So be open to feedback. You don't have to listen to all of the feedback. So if someone gives you feedback, listen to it, take it on board, um, but you don't have to react to it. Um, sometimes you'll get a lot of feedback and it'll be really confusing. So when I ask for feedback, I just ask for feedback from a few people and that's generally people that are, I trust or uh, you know I, uh, I think that in this particular circumstance that their uh, their opinions valid so um, it, it, you know the group of people I ask for feedback will change depending on what project it is but listen to feedback ask for feedback respond to it if you think it's necessary sometimes you get feedback and, and it will confirm something that you didn't want to do or you did want to do so just try not to close off too much and be open but the danger with that these days is on the internet like we all are is you get so much feedback it becomes confusing and you don't know where to go. So just keep your feedback focused. Okay. So going on that, so number eight is something that I call a mastermind group. You might have heard of this before. So when you're working on a project or basically at any time you're painting, you can have in your head, it'll be a mastermind group. And that'll be, I don't recommend any more than four to six people. And these are people that you respect and you trust. And uh, basically you can go to them and ask them questions and uh, get feedback from them. And they'll, they'll be your trusted advisors and you can be theirs as well, the other way around. But it's great to, to improve upon your painting. So you've got your mentor and your mentor is probably in that mastermind group. And then you've got another few other people as well, which you trust. And then that's like a little circle and you can support each other. And, uh, and you'll build that trust as well. And then you can just go for them for feedback. And uh, yeah, I, I really recommend doing that because like when I was in the Ever Metal team, that was our mastermind group. We improve upon each other and we did that. So try and create your own teams if you can of people that you trust. And uh, I really recommend that because I think it'll help a lot as well. So number nine, <laughs> be inspired. So collect books, look at websites, go to galleries, look at art. Look at, um, like one of my favorite books is a book called um, 
uh, Out of the Forest by Paul Bonner. Uh, and that's just, the colours in there are really inspiring. So that's just an example. Like I always got art books by my, uh, by my desk all the time. So, and you can be influenced by anything. It could be film, cinema, you know, cinematography, um, anything. But just be inspired and have a look around. Don't just stay focused on miniatures. There's loads of other things to influence you and inspire you as well. So that's another tip. So number 10 is practice, fail, practice, fail. It's just keep practicing. And it's the, it's the word people don't want to hear is whenever they say, how, how do you do that? How do you get good? It's just repetition, practice, and then failing and then practice again. And you just have to keep doing it. And sometimes you'll keep banging your head against the wall trying to do something. And then one day it'll just, it'll, he'll hit you and you'll do it. Or someone will show you and, 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 it, and, and it will seem so simple. So just keep doing it, keep practicing and, and you will get there in the end. So, uh, and it's a word no one wants to hear, but you've got to practice. It's as simple as that. Whenever you get time, if you want to be the best painter, if you want to improve, get practicing. Okay, so number 11, finish miniatures. So don't leave miniatures unfinished. So I used to do this all the time. I'd get halfway through a model and I'd be like, oh, I can't be bothered anymore. I just want to get onto the next thing or something new comes out and you want to paint that. Finishing miniatures is really important. Even if you, you're you halfway through and you know you've messed it up and, you, and you've and you got to put it to the side, just, just finish the model. It's another one on your shelf that's finished. And you will have learned something in that as well. Um, even by making mistakes, sometimes you learn the most by making those mistakes and you can apply them on the next model and it'll be a visual reminder of what you didn't do right that you can do right next time as well so and we did that with sculpting as well we always when I was sculpting it was finish those models even though you know you know they're wonky and they're no good still finish sculpting them because there's a lot of learning to be had within that so finish painting your models as well I don't know it's hard but you're painting one model and you've put a few hours into it already if you just put it to the side that's a few hours of your life you'll never get him back so finish that model if you can uh, so number 12 is learn something new on each miniature so every time you're painting a miniature ask yourself before you start it what is there on this that I can do that I've never done before or that I can improve upon so if I'm going to paint a Bud Angel Tactical Marine, it doesn't sound very exciting, but maybe I can improve on the way I'm, I'm painting red on that Marine, or maybe there's some, some new battle damage or technique I can try. And you can do that with any miniature, even if it's something you think, well, I've got to do this, it's boring, I don't want to do it, but I've got to do it. There's something you can learn within there. There is always something you can do or improve upon. So give yourself a little challenge in each miniature, and uh, that's always a fun little thing as well. But do it at work as well if there's something new that I've got to do. So it's uh, I always try and find out what, what is there in, in this that I can do that's going to challenge me and make me excited. Even if the task might not seem that exciting, there's something in there. So do that with your painting as well. Let's get some more water. I've been coughing all day today, guys. <coughs> I like that. So uh, number 13 to paint neat so people want to how do you paint so neat because I'm I kind of a, I'm a neat painter so I'm not a messy painter I don't think when I say neat sometimes that's bad it's like if I'm trying to paint Nurgle or something it doesn't help <laughs> so to learn how to paint neat paint space marines it's as simple as that all I did when I was in my teenage years was just paint space marines over and over again I love space marines everyone does but well hopefully uh, so just paint space marines edge highlight space marines over and over again paint a tactical squad do it, do another tactical squad, do it. and your, your eye-hand coordination will be so good at the end of it, you could be able to put that brush where it needs to go every time. And if you can do that, you can paint anything. So it's just, it's, you know, that perseverance about that eye-hand coordination, that's gonna really help. So I always paint space marines, I've got lots of panel lines, you could paint other things as well, but space marines come to mind. So uh, we've got number 14, innovate to be the best. So. This is something that's really interesting. So like Golden Demon competitions, you'll find that the guys that win the top prizes, they're the guys that are innovating and doing new, unique stuff. Uh, so David Soper and Chris Clayton, they come to mind all the time. So when they go to Golden Demon, they've always done something new, whether it be new effects, you know, new water effects, new approaches to painting, new texturing effects. There'll always be something new. It'll always be new, nothing you've seen before, and you'll, it'll blow you away. So. To be the best, you've got to really innovate and think, what haven't I seen before? What angle can I come at this that's new and fresh and different? So that's a, that's a good piece of advice, I think, especially for competition painting. 
Uh, number 15, uh, spend more time painting than talking about painting. Uh, this is something I see a lot these days, especially with the massive distraction of social media and and I'm like really bad at it. I get distracted by Instagram and images and I just get drawn away and I'm like, oh, I've just spent half an hour when I could have been doing some painting. So try and spend more time actually painting than talking about painting or looking at like, you know, Instagram or scrolling through, you know, the actual time you put into painting is really important. So, and I should probably do that as well. <laughs> So uh, number 16, plan your work. This is something that I've always been big on. So think through your project before you start it. When I say project, I mean your model or your diorama or your competition piece. Think it through, write it down, write down your recipes, get your mood board, do you get some images together, plan it. Know what you're gonna do before you pick up your brush. It's gonna save you a lot of hassle and heartbreak and turmoil and all of that sort of stuff as well. So plan your project to some degree. Uh, I think it's definitely worth doing. Uh, number 17, so don't rush your bases as well. So this is something that I always used to do. So that's why I'm saying it. This is like, you painted an amazing model, you spent a week on it, and then you just rush the base because you want it finished and who cares about bases. But really have a think about the base as well. You should be thinking about the base before you're painting the model, and in the very least, as you're painting the model, think, well, you know, what's the base going to be like, and how's it going to reflect the model and set off the model, and what scene is it in? So really, you want to think about the base before you're painting, so because the environment that the that the model is in influences the color scheme and the lighting and all of that as well. So don't neglect the bases. Uh, always spend a bit of time on them, especially if it's a competition piece. Uh, so number eighteen. Um, so if in doubt about anything, keep it simple. Uh, I think I've seen, I've seen a lot of stuff where things are overworked or over rendered or overthought. Sometimes you can, you can take things too far or, or try things that are just not needed with painting. Sometimes it's just as simple as base coat shade, highlight, highlight, you know, things like that. So keeping it simple sometimes is, is the best approach. Uh, and I've seen a lot of tutorials and things which go into way too much depth for the finish that's needed, where it should be just, oh, it's as simple as this, you know, these, these techniques, um, they don't need these, these massive stages or this complicated stuff. Sometimes it's just best to keep it simple. So uh, I think that's, that's a bit of advice that I like to keep in mind all of the time, especially when I'm doing tutorials. <coughs> um, number 19 is uh, slow down. Um, I think like a lot of the comments I've read recently of people are saying um, they've slowed down a lot by watching me paint and see how, how I approach it. And when people ask me, how long did that model take you? Let's say for a character model, it's a week's work. So that's 40 hours. And they people, oh really? I only spend six hours on my models. It's like, yeah, you need to slow down and spend a longer on these models if you want those sort of results and those finishes. So slow down and you get good first and then you get fast later so remember that so don't you know beat yourself up if you're not fast you just the important thing is especially if you're watching my channel and you want to get better it's just slow down take your time you know it's it's worth it if you want to get those great results so number 20 so don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it so if someone says you can't paint that model, you, you can never win a golden demon, you, you can never join the other metal team, you can't do anything. You know, don't don't retaliate or anything. <laughs> just just when they say that to you, just let it fuel the fire. You know, just take it inside and say, yeah, you know, you, you can do it and you will do it. And by by applying all of this advice and other advice that you'll get, you'll get there. You'll just keep going. So just don't give up. Um, you can get to those golden demons, you can you can get to those competitions and you can win those prizes if you just keep going, keep practicing. Don't let anyone put you down with it. Just to keep taking the feedback, keep getting better, practice, practice, <laughs> keep going, and you'll be fine. But just don't don't let people tell you that you can't do it. All you've got to do is just put the hours in and apply yourself and listen to people and you'll be fine, you'll get there. So, and I got number 21 as well. I know I said 20, but I 21 as well, which is something that I'm big on. <coughs> so, is just share knowledge. So the only way that anyone gets better is uh, by gaining knowledge. And the easiest way to do that is from other people. So, 
Uh, the only place I could gain knowledge when I was painting, sound old now, is just through White Dwarf magazines and things like that. But now you've got the whole world can teach you painting. So if you're able to share knowledge with someone, do it. And uh, if you think someone can, ask. Uh, and I'm sure most of the time, you know, they'll, they'll be happy to help. So, um, and the worst thing in the world is I think if someone's got some knowledge that can help someone and they just, they don't give it. So if you can do it, share the knowledge and help people. So they're my top tips and uh, hopefully uh, you'll find them useful or a little bit insightful anyway. And um, once again, thanks for subscribing to the channel and thanks for all the comments and uh, we'll see where the channel goes now. I don't know what's going to happen next. It should be pretty fun and uh, more tutorials on the way, guys. Thank you very much.